Salam sejahtera and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you uh, to the Bar Council for inviting me uh, and also congratulations to the uh, organizer for putting such a, a renowned uh, speaker. So, yeah. Uh, I just want to share a little bit with regards to um, why about the opposition, why do we need a strong opposition? We certainly do need, uh, given, <laughs> given that, you know, um, we should not actually um, be laid back and, uh, uh, and allow the uh, government to actually uh, do the work only. Yeah, even though we may still feel the euphoria of the change of government, but uh, there's a lot of things that needs to be done and there's a lot of uh, check and balance that we need to also take into consideration. I just give an example of uh, my experience when I was elected and uh, went down to the ground to actually um, see that there's a lot of um, uh, and it also brings to me why institutional reform uh, is so important and why the need to put into place uh, democratic governance yeah, as uh, guiding principles uh, for a working democracy. Um, it is actually about the, uh, just take the example of the uh, schools. Yeah? Um, there are in, I'm from uh, Pataling Jaya, there are 86 uh, schools that are in critical conditions structurally as well as in terms of the students, the studies and all that. But structurally, there are 13 schools that are really um, going down uh, because of lack of money from the uh, ed uh, education <coughs> department. But federal government has allocated budget. Yeah, has allocated budget to actually spruce up the uh, schools. Uh, the same as when we, when I go and visit some of these low-cost flats, there are which are actually quite dilapidated, uh, particularly in Taman Medan, Dato Harun, and uh, uh, Lumba Subang. It is really your urban slum uh, of the worst nature. Uh, it's not just about the uh, dirt and the cleanliness and the hygiene but it's about an unemployment, gangsterism, drugs, uh, uh, and poverty, yeah? uh, where you actually find young people who can't even have a good meal, or not, not even one meal a day. And we have to um, start feeding them uh, on a daily basis. So where, where did the money go for all this uh, uh, housing, education, and that's where it becomes so important, so very important that we actually now do it right, set up a system that actually is more transparent. You have the data, the information. You have uh, a set of principles to go by. You have a change of mindset as to um, putting people first. Uh, and, and a system that really works, uh, that is efficient, uh, where you can actually prevent a lot, a lot of uh, leakages. Um, it's amazing when uh, people start relating to you the stories of um, procurement, uh, about um, um, the agencies and so forth, and it's quite heartbreaking. So I, I think that, you know, um, when we actually talk about uh, what, what are we actually um, being the eyes and ears for, it is really to ensure not just the Pakatan Manifesto uh, see the light of day, but also more, more uh, than what uh, the Manifesto offers. To actually be very sure that you know the next five to ten years, we put in a, a good system that actually um, is people friendly, is respectful, is inclusive. Uh, transparent and be able to actually give us the information that we need. It's a tall order. Yeah, it's a very tall order. It, uh, it includes a lot of mindset change, um, the way people work for the past 60, 60 over years. Um, it's, it's a very tall order, but uh, given that we have this chance, um, Pakatan Harapan, and together with every one of you and the public um, and the civil society, we have to give it a try. 
uh, we have to give it a try because that's, uh, that was not just because it's a promise, but it's because the people also have hope that um, it will be better than what we uh, came out from. So, um, so you know, um, when, um, when we actually look at the opposition, who are the opposition in parliament? Uh, well, it happens to be um, Barisan National and uh, possibly PAS and possibly some uh, parties from Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, and, and that is where they too have to learn how to be an opposition. Uh, whatever your views are, um, I think that you know NGOs and um, and other organisations will have to engage them. Will have to engage them to ensure that um, critical questions are being asked in Parliament uh, uh, and to the ministries, um, and also to make sure that you know these promises, policies, laws, um, and plans are being implemented. Uh, I think that has been our greatest uh, challenge uh, for many, many years, that you know, we have very good blueprints, but they don't get to the ground, they don't get implemented, they don't get uh, distributed to, to places that really need uh, the money, the, the knowledge, and the finance, uh, and the uh, resources. So um, the other thing is that uh, I, I just want to add on is that um, the, the issue of race and religion will still play a big role in the debate uh, in the Malaysian politics. And this is something that we have to start engaging in uh, and not avoiding. Uh, we have avoided it for just, just too long. And uh, it's about time that we, we actually um, discuss openly. Um, the sensitive issues and and I think that you know the opposition will have to play a bigger role in uh, in this if if they can if not then um, civil society will have to pay, play the lead role uh, in uh, steering the um, society to be more inclusive and respectful of um, each and every one of us in Malaysia so with that thank you very much